Ja, ja. I'm not late. It's the drugs. It's the body. Uh, making it through the, the hard part. I'm getting my a little bit of stamina back. I made some um, cinnamon rolls today. And I rose them up and did all the rolling out and let them rise up again. And the cream cheese topping. Very good. <laughs> I guess I don't have to wear my hat, but it is a little chilly on my head tonight. The air conditioner is running. I should turn it off. It's um, 2 o'clock in the morning. It's probably freezing Jeff in his room. But um, I'm talking lightly, and I don't really have to. Let's see if I can clear my throat. But uh, I was um, yeah, bored, and uh, I can't sleep. And I had food, and I had munchies and water, and I think I'm pretty much functioning again. But I don't know why I come alive at night. But it's no fun. There's nothing going on. No one's <laughs> I need to stay away from my videos during the day so I have something to watch at night. Go on a night shift. So anyways, um, it's finally the 8th, because it was just the 7th. <laughs> And uh, I don't know, maybe we could walk through the numbers a little bit more, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Considering the whole month, but there is an 88 pass passage situation with the 108. I guess it would be 1008. Eight is the fullness of the number. But an 180, uh, 188 expression. So it's a. Uh, Lionsgate thing situation again. Like here's the one one of those Lionsgates. Now the one in this capacity of a step, beginning child. Child returns through the gate. That eighty eight gate, that lion's gate. It should be the the child becomes the lion of the tribe of Judah, but it doesn't mean that in Judaic terms that he is of Judah. <laughs> No, he's adopted as their firstborn because he's a firstborn unto all of us. Yeah, to be born again would be the one that returns. So it would be the child bearing forth that rod of iron, which is very important. Yeah, very, very important. Uh, in order to. Uh, Secure the nations, absolutely. And then ultimately, uh, Thyatira steps up. Those children that did not accept the Jezebel ways. These are the children that didn't accept the uh, socialist, democratic, well, I don't want to say cratic, democracy. Yeah, the, the harlot that's riding upon the beast system or Europe or the rest of them, as it is. So Thyatira, the Church of Thyatira, is given a rod to rule the nations, and um, that of the bright and morning. <laughs> and I talk about that all the time. I'm going to pause it real quick. Hold on. Sorry about that. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Suddenly. I, um, and then I remembered why I turned the video on. Hey, when my curtains cracked open in the darkness, because people in the alley can see me sitting here. Um. Anyways, I um. I ran into a video. To get my train of thought. I ran into a video that um. About Enoch. And I have read, or listened to, the audio version of um. The 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 book of Enoch, and. It's quite dreadful uh, in, in light of its punishments and bindings and the angels and all the workings and that of Enoch itself. And uh, throughout uh, um, 
my experience is, I had a very good friend, uh, Robbie Anson, Down syndrome, trisomy 21, uh, that inspires me to know that he who walks with God has the face of God and that it's the child that we see God in. And it's through Down syndrome. And I believe that Enoch, the true Enoch, that is spoken about was the first Down syndrome. Very touched, very um, incredible person who ultimately was the father of Methuselah. Yeah. Now Enoch was snatched away. He was snatched away. And so I didn't really remember the details of the snatching away. So I, when this video came up, it was presenting Metatron as Ena. And I said, well, I've never really considered or thought of or had been taken there in my thoughts um, because I avoid the Book of Enoch. Uh, it's possible that the it's it was for meant for the end times when all things are, and it's nothing but evil wickedness throughout the world again. But I don't want to be there yet, even though it seems like that's what the world is now in a different capacity. Anyways, um, so I listened, and it describes Enoch being shriveled into himself and turning into a beam of light and shooting up into the heavens. Yeah, just like the nuke. Just like the nuke video from what I posted yesterday. Yeah, or day before, the one with Las Cruces. And El Paso, where the guy saw that the woman was in the light. And she began to shrivel into herself. And you could see that. It's like being microwaved. You know, you're oh, oh. So like, oh, my God, such horror. To lose all your body water all at once in an electrical field because the plasma exchange of what I was talking about that expresses itself. Uh, uh, upon the parasite, like a chemical, like a radiation, <laughs> magnetic, electrical, that you would just become a little barbecue twig of light, like a matchstick burning. And the power is coming from the universe, or actually from the arm of the galaxy, transferring itself to the soul bodies that are within the galaxy that are attending the wedding in heaven. And uh, here we are with invitation at hand. So, uh, yeah. 11-11 <laughs> means two suns, but it, also, it can also mean it, this sort of center stage of fire that we weren't quite prepared for. And I say to myself that God doesn't use nukes. And here in the book of Enoch, it's like there's a big old nuke going off right there. And I think there's other there's other parts of the Old Testament that you, know, you would consider must be like a nuke, Sodom and Gomorrah. I think of nukes as weaponry, as things that are created by the hand of man with an intent and uh, and an idol. So it's a big difference. And so I don't really, I don't really allow that sort of thing because a thousand could fall on my right hand and 10,000 at my left or whatever. No harm shall come upon me. No harm shall come upon me. No. But how interesting um, that that snatching away that hard puzzle would be such a process to turn a man into an angel. So Enoch into an angel, but yet both sides, the um, Seth side and the uh, Cain side would have uh, an Enoch involved. And I think there's also another Methuselah, or at least it's spelled a little bit differently. 
and they follow their same kind of pattern of names. And so we find titles, you know, immersed within biblical terms that are names, but they're actually titles. So we don't quite understand the word or the meaning of the word Enoch. Was it a name or was it a word? Was it a situation or what? And so in light of, you know, and all those angels involved and named, that's a little too much for me to to, to grasp in um, the capacity of today's world when we have enough names to go around. <laughs> enemies, yeah, we have enough enemies to go around uh, because that's the name. And so, I don't know, I just found that interesting. So that new thing keeps coming up. And all the uh, visions that these young people are having, uh, rapture dreams, is bombs coming down, they going up. Well, you would. <laughs> you would if that's where you want to go, into the energy force, the energy field. May the force be with you when the work is here, when you're here. You're here for, to receive, not a nuke, I mean, to receive him. And especially in regards to why so that man can be beyond the beast. Because right now we are the beast made in their image. They're the ones that are lost. It's the angelic host that's lost. Yeah, they're the ones that are lost. So uh, we could wonder, poor little Adam caused all this trouble 6,000 years ago. When the life of this planet and the and the length of the soul body far exceeds that and shows that there's intelligent life has been all wrong. And that we've been manipulated. Have been all along. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, it's very, very fascinating. And we've destroyed cultures just to to claim to claim inheritance. Yeah, destroy cultures to claim inheritance. That's what they do. Destroy people to claim, well, their their livelihoods, too. They do that, too, you know. People don't mind destroying other people just to keep their livelihoods going or to make sure that someone else hurts. And that's their livelihood, is to make people hurt. That's what they do. That's what they do. Yeah. But, uh, I had another interesting, fascinating uh, speculation tonight, which was kind of interesting. Puts me in different perspectives, you know, for all that I talk about. Somehow little parts of it come together over the years. I don't know why. <laughs> why can't it just instantly happen? <laughs> it might be nice. So um, I had that incident um, when I, my friend Nadley died. On the same day that Trump bombed Syria, based on a lie, because the general gave him a lie. He was part of Obama's little agenda to start his little problems. So anyways, they were working him. And my friend, Natalie Green, was, she passed away that day. She was euthanized. She was processed and parted out for parts. And... Uh, organ donation sort of thing like that, even though she had uterine cancer, but that had been surgically removed. And then I guess it was from there, the treatments, and it was too much. It was also sudden, and it was terrible, and so as we gathered with her friends at Nessa's Cafe, I tried to allow myself to open up um, because I was so cloistered to start volunteering doing dishes. And it gave me a means to procure marijuana that I was using every week for the pain that I was experiencing. And uh, so ultimately there was a fallout and I was thrown out like a whore as if I was trying to replace some sort of husband. And, um, you know, I was trying to find a life within that life that I had just lost. 
and my friend, who was an endearment beyond endearment. Ever since I arrived in Las Cruces, I spent so much time with her. And my experiences sharing, you know, even my incident with Gabriel and the winds and everything else, the Shalem colony ex expressions, the she saw me at the Cosmati farms. She knew me as I am. Friend, brotherly love. She never married. She never had children. She was an adopted child. Everybody was her brother and sister. It was so amazing. So, anyways, terrible story. Getting thrown out ostracized and I they tried to make friends again in a very peculiar way like youthful people do and I don't know what's up with the light <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that um maybe it's just on the cusp of catching the light or something I don't know um maybe it's my computer it's breathing <laughs> so anyways I uh It was at that point when I walked away and said, I can't have people I can't trust in my life. I said that. I can't, I can't trust. Especially the way they pulled up out there. It was terrible. Um, so that was the other brother. And he was trying to make amends. And then he was lying at the same time. I could tell. He was just trying to work me back in. And I knew that. And I don't really use the word psychic. I'm very intuitive. I, I, I hit on things. And it upsets people because in conversation I can hit on something very private. It's very personal. And you wonder where I came from. It just comes from within. It jumps right out. Something that you needed to hear or something that needed to trigger someone. And for the fathom of me, I don't know where it came from. And then yet it's just a glimpse of what I saw. So I knew that I could work with, with the young man, John, in a new business venture. But I thought he was going to go into some kind of growing growing business or sailing, you know, because he was my drug dealer. I was getting marijuana from him. And that's when it was a medical marijuana situation in New Mexico, but I didn't have access to it. And I can't just say, oh, I'm in pain. No, they're going to want to legitimately want to know why. So it wasn't until COVID, after I'd been ostracized, that I actually got my card. You know that. Yeah, I shared that. So anyway, so... I took this reading, Psychic Sounds by B, this evening, and I could hear that story coming through. Yeah. But what it was telling me isn't, uh, it's not about hashing out what took place. I, I really could care less. I, I could have gone to work with him. His mother passed away, and he took over her business, which is actually his business now. And Nessa's, I could have I walked away from Nessa's. I don't need to be a dishwasher. But the eclectic nature of his mom's business downtown, right downtown, and then turning that into a partial cafe, I would have fit right in. And then I could have been a very, very sound-minded employee, if not a good manager, and uh, hardworking and getting myself together, and then leaving those things that I cannot trust. And it could have worked because I was going to be that devoted. I was. And so maybe I was pre-planning internally without saying a word, just kind of working my way in to be friends and then hopefully proposition and then step in and then help. Just volunteer. Keep volunteering until finally this. That's it. You got it. I've done that before. It's, imp it's important to prove to people that you can perform, not just embellish so the reaction by john was terrible it was it was it was rancid it was violent coming out of violence was coming out of that man because he's experienced violence and that's his answer to end things so i cut it off but it, here's the thing that i was going to get to what occurred to me through B's reading was that that seven years of losing Natalie, this has been my famine, even though 
It seems so productive in the plant department, but very costly. The water, the hard work, uh, the traveling to get those cuttings, the investment of a of a little pop up green tent that wouldn't last a season, the inability to to maintain the kind of tools and things that are needed to propel. And and for some reason or another, the soil base wasn't producing. I switched to a cocoa burr. I said, I'll never use it again. It's got no nutritional value. It did terrible things in the sun. All the plants were burned. I, I fought, fought, fought. And, and on video, it looks so good. I thought for the desert until now, until now that it's all gone. And all those pots are sitting out there and all that plastic is sitting out there and I need to get out there and clean it all out and throw all those pots away and all those things that I collected that was going to be inventory stuff to create a business that can potentially, I could just sell it home and get some income. And it's always been that struggle, you know, for me to find that niche. I did it before, you know, I built a, a shop building and I had it wired. And it was with concrete floor and everything, and I had a, a TIG welder. And within one year of that time, I had no shop building. I had none of that. And I met someone that was desperately in need of a welder. We had children who needed to support his children. And I said, oh, honey, you take this. This is yours. Take it. It's yours. And it helps his business. It helped his business. He could fix fences. He could do all these things. It would be wired up to his truck. He would just mount it to his truck and part of his equipment. And it was very nice. It was a Miller welder and TIG welder. So it had the capacity of both the arc and the TIG. Yeah. But I just break. I break when I need to help someone because I want to help. And then I end up not being helped. You know, so ultimately when John kicked me out, and he would buy medicinal marijuana, and then he would sell it as a dealer. So um, my supply ran out. I had to the street with it, and we were using this brick crap that was on the street, and my teeth rotted out. You know, they all fell out. Remember that? And I got really sick. It's probably went in my bones, went in my brain. Was it fentanyl? I mean, I had that incident with that young man with fentanyl in my backyard. That was pretty crazy. This whole world is crazy. And, of course, I had to break through. And that's when I applied for the situation that I am in, under Medicaid, that I was able to get my teeth fixed and my hernia fixed and other things, cortisone injections. And then ultimately it's trying to find out what's wrong with me. Only to bring me forward to this moment, you know, thank God I had done that because now everything's paid for. I don't have any medical bills. No, I'm a big fat zero. I've always been a big fat zero. I walked into the year 2000 with zero money, zero debt, zero. And when I came to Las Cruces, I told myself I didn't ever want to go into debt. The zero is the hero, as De Niro is to Rome. It brings down the regime. So for the years, you know, it's just by cash or whatever. And then I would, when I went to work for the nursery, Jackie Meineke here in Las Cruces, um, Enchanted Gardens, I didn't really take a paycheck. She can verify that too. She's so sweet. No, I took plants. That was the trade. So I never took money from her. No. I'd work all week and then I'd get to cash in. She'd give me like 10 plants. So I'd go through the nursery picking out 10 plants and I'd add them to my garden. And I did this for several years until finally my garden became this incredible oasis on Cosmoli Farm with over 250 species that are different types. There's several salvia, several of this, several of that, but different plant types. And uh, almost 250 different types of plants in my yard. 
and then to be kicked out suddenly, you know, horribly based on a lie because the neighbor coveted the land that was behind him and the landlord passed away and he started harassing the landlady saying, I'm trespassing on my own house, on my own property and calling the police on me and harassing me and jumping out at me. All the while he was stealing from his company and I was watching him. So I made a phone call and I got out of there and I reached out to Spirit and Spirit took me to La Mesa and I went through all those experiences. But the thing, thing is, is that it all has a purpose to this moment, doesn't it? So seven years ago when I lost Natalie, that's when my famine began. And accordingly, you know, through Daniel's 70th seven, the sevens and the placement of such an incredible number that, uh, yeah, I think that, uh, I think that a lot of people have had plenty over the past seven years. And the switch, this change, this interdimensional whatever flip of that eight of power and control, where one side leads to the other, when we store our treasures in heaven, not on earth, that sort of expression is about to ready to begin. Yeah, and those who have had plenty for seven years now, it's up to you to, to open up your coffer that you put away all those things for this famine that come. And uh, for us that have gone through such a famine as these past seven years, emotionally, physically, um, psychologically, it doesn't matter. Now it's the turnover. This is the Jubilee. This is the restoration. Yeah. I'm dead free. I'm dead free. And now I actually have a bank account with money in it. Thank God I'm on SSI. Now there's money in there. And I was able to put myself in a very worthy chair. Very expensive. I looked at the price. I have to remember that I paid that much, but that's the way this world is, isn't it? And I'm able to sleep and I'm able to function and hopefully allow this, this chemo to do its work because it's in, in its finality. I don't think there's, there's another drug above this one that's going to help me, but it's helping. Okay, yeah. So from this point, it's helping. I'm still here. So, uh, fascinating how the, it's not AI, not this time. This, this is more synchronicity that deals with, uh, people, well, maybe, maybe the feeding of AI across the spectrum, but still the whole fascination that, that young men's or that man's truck driver's dream about the woman in the light, the beam of light. That's exactly how it's described in Enoch. So, yeah, it's an event. And it is a, an event of consciousness. So they said Metatron is Enoch in the Zohar, or not Zohar, in the Book of Enoch. In, in some, I guess it would be in some of those teachers, whatever. In scholarly ways, it's not accepted, but it's said that Enoch then was transported as that light, stand at the right hand of God, and to uh, hold a feather as a, a, a scribe tool, the feather, the scribe's feather, the reed. I guess it's a feather. And uh, it's a pen. So he's going to open or write signature, like a Bible, like write the Bible. And then, or his own book, the Book of Enoch, I don't know, it was inspired to write all that and know about him because if you know you, you would wonder how they know so much that they didn't just embellish it create it yeah just like that uh you know narnia story yeah just like any other trilogy that you would 
you would conjure. So within the fabric of time space, it has and will exist in consciousness. Yeah. So that means that, and then also the feather, Metatron, or Enoch, as they're saying, he who stands at the right hand of God is um, holding a scroll. Well, that just kind of throws it in a, di in a totally different light. <laughs> so you're saying that Metatron is the angel that John sees holding the scroll. And he's not the dragon, unless Metatron and Enoch and the dragon are all one and the same. So as to be the Christ, the first Adam, last Adam. So is Enoch Adam? No. No. He's a son of Adam. But we inherit that which is of our father. For their own sake. That's the redemption, isn't it? That's the truest gula of it all. Is if you can save your own father from his own demise. Yeah. Can you? Can you save your father from his own sins after after death? Well, there's the prodigal son. Yeah, and then there's the notion that uh, death and hell are overcome. Yeah. By he who comes. Well, of course, he overcame it. Yeah, the blue child. I say blue child because it was through a jinn that I received a child that went into me that could never be on again. And I knew the child was blue because the child was, I thought, was asleep, but actually the child was still born. The child was dead. So I placed a dead child within my spirit through a gin, you know, through a genie, a blue man. And through that truth, I realized that the devil himself, who sits at the right hand, who consumes everything, covets everything, loves it, that he cannot, you know, because the dragon is poised to consume the child. Well, he is poised, as the Christ, to consume the child. doesn't want the lamb to be born, but the lamb is born as if crucified, as if he was dead. And I realized, oh, the child is dead and is still born. And shall be born again. Because the devil cannot consume the dead. Only the living. And that's why redemption is available. And that's why we've been given this f incredibly powerful gift. As the beast. To know that the body is everlasting. Yeah, the body is everlasting. Everlasting life. And to fear not. And that pain is death, and it shall be overcome. It shall be. So. Yeah, so where does that take me in <laughs> the capacity of it? Well, there's so many watch dates, aren't there? They got that down. They'd be selling God. Their watch dates. But there are some interesting points out there. And then still, given the fact that we're at a high solar maximum, with all this expression and people are getting uh, auroras, and of course they're getting kind of anxious too, bombings, and getting anxious too and putting out videos about poor El Paso. <laughs> but I never liked El Paso, you know, I told you that. No, I find all this fascinating, and I don't know if I'm expressing it enough with by linking. There's nothing to link tonight. I'm not going to link the other, this next one or the Enoch one. There's no reason. It's a message that's coming through to me personally on a personal level. You know, on a, on a in 
intuitive though. Yeah. yeah. It's almost time for me to get a haircut. It's been a long time. Fuzzy. And uh, it's still only Tuesday, isn't it? Tomorrow, Wednesday. It's hard to say tomorrow since today is Tuesday. And it's still not daylight. You know, it's only quarter to three in the morning. And um, Wednesday is when I go to see the doctor. And I'm, I'm pretty, pretty pumped up to encourage him to keep forward, you know, but to don't stand in the way of my comforts, <laughs> like saline. Yeah, because I want to be hydrated again. It helps. And, uh, of course, the following week is when I do it again. So I still have a whole other week to recover. So even though tomorrow I'm not recovered, I mean, I'm still symptomatic, I'm able to express the symptoms without fear of worry of what he's going to say about them because I'm not trying to change them. They're changing themselves. They're happening as it's happening. I'm overcoming as it's coming. And each time is a little draw down and a draw down and get up and draw down and get up. But his job is to watch my blood and monitor, you know, that sort of thing, and then administer and authorize. So I don't need any arguments. I know I'm pumping him up. I want to pump him up. Do what you got to do. But we got to do it. And, uh, Quit pussyfooting around. I mean, I don't think he is anymore because I think he's oh, there was all that upsetness over that Vena Cava thing. We don't want that ever, 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 ever to happen again. Because that would take me out. Yeah, that would be the one. It's surprising how many times there have been incidences since all this began from the embolism and everything else. To get me to, and then the bronchoscopy school teaching tools they did, I realize now what happened when they went into my lungs. He sees, my doctor says there's no, it's not invasive, it shouldn't have bothered you, but I went into a little closet room that could have been half the size of this room with six grown men in it, each wanting to take their turn to learn how to put a bronchoscopy, do a, perform a bronchoscopy with lavage and possible tissue samples. So they're all, it's a learning tool. So they, they really abused me. It was like, uh, what did you do? You know, forceps. And then I had a woken up with a spot on my tongue, a, a burn. So they had a seat, they had some kind of clamp on my tongue, pull it out. And that clamp probably had alcohol on it. And they swab it before they every time pull your pull it out and whoever had a hold of my tongue, they weren't gonna let go. So the whole time they're doing this thing in my lungs while I'm under anesthesia, and there's six grown men, each wanting to have a turn. Well, when I woke up I felt like, Oh my god, what the hell happened to me? I couldn't breathe, couldn't ch I was choking, I was and in the pain, and I remember my voice and the jumping. Oh my God, that's when everything changed. And I could smoke before that. So I could smoke right up to that day. <laughs> Marijuana, you know, not cigarettes, but that's when I could never use my lungs again. And that, of course, I did pick up smoking a little bit of pot midsummer, right after the first chemo and the, before the radiation. So I might have triggered my lung again. But I really needed it. I needed to get high. <laughs> I'm a big old addict. So I had to get some memories out of me. And now I'm fine. I don't need to smoke. Don't have any desire for it. Pot sitting around the house, beautiful. Purple buds with crystals, and they just smell so good, and it's all so pretty. But it's not for me. You know, I get my little gummies. A little tasty candy. Take a little pop in the candy. And then the comfort food that I... It takes my body to feel comfortable enough to not be uncomfortable <laughs> and pain-free if uh, possible, which I am tonight. Until I lay down, and then I could be hit with joint pain and bone pain again. But that's also eliciting uh, immunology responses. What's happening? 
So you let it pass. You get through the time walls. You get through the... I wish there was someone I could talk to that's been through this. But the industry has us isolated. It does. And the social workers are not doing that. They're not doing what social workers should do. No, and, and I, I guess they want me to create the resources. They want me to do the resourcing. They want me to go out there and do the connections. And, well, honey, <laughs> the patient, I'm the one that's going to, I'm being hit by it. So I can't do it. I can't do it. Maybe other people or their family members that help and get involved with doing that sort of thing. But it would be nice to sit down with someone who's been through this drug, this um, sep. Zelka. Sepselka. Yeah, pretty serious stuff. So if you're on it, or I've tried it, please let me know. Let me know what you went through. And what kind of expectations on the duration? The duration capacity is, is unknown to me. So in regular chemo, I went the first time was three days I fell back. And then I felt bad the next time, like five to seven days. And then it moved up to like 12 days, you know, amongst the 21 days between. And I kept saying that they must have it timed out. But uh, this one is, um, this one, I cannot. And it has been uh, seven days tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I can handle that. But the next round is going to be 14 days. And then the next round is going to be the full 21 days. And then that's complete. And that's it. Because it's just the three months. October, November, December. So. And it's accumulative. Of course, it's cumulative. And it can be adjusted. But I, I just, if I can handle it, i got to take it. Because this is the last. This is the last operation, I guess, you know, the last chance to get, to get it right, hopefully. And that in nutrition, because that, that has changed. That has changed my consciousness with uh, making sure that my supplements are taken care of, that I'm in conscious of not utilizing certain foods. And, uh, of course, now integrating some things that I probably shouldn't like junk food, but that's okay, uh, given comfort, and uh, making that adjustment afterwards, you know, clearing clearing it out afterwards. But uh, most definitely still hand-making things. I just have to stop harvesting. I can't do that no more. No more harvesting. No. Don't have it. And... Uh, I still would have failed the seven years in the goodness if I had gotten the job with John or promoted it through his mother and a sales position or uh, purchasing because of the eclectic nature of the items they were moving. And then, of course, the cafe, because I love to cook and I love food. And once I feel comfortable in a cooking environment, there's nothing that stops me from utilizing a kitchen or recipes, or any other thing, and making delicious love, because I pour the love in. I've always poured love into the food. I always, when I'm cooking, I'm, songs are coming through me. The thoughts that are flowing are always in goodness. Uh, there's none of this animosity. I'm not angry. I'm not, I'm not feeling like, oh my God, I'm rushed for a task. No, I let go of those things. And, and yeah, I used to be that way, but Anyways, if I had taken that job with John, that's just purely hypothetical, that that intent, which was there, to move forward, because I wanted to work with him as a boss. I knew he wanted to be his own boss. I just didn't know what he was going to do. And uh, and what he did is appropriate and abundant. And it would have been. It would have been the seven years that I would have prospered. I wouldn't have been on that street drug crap. I wouldn't have gone through all the emotional trauma. And I would have continued to honor my friend and, and hope as I just make my own, uh, well, 
revelation, right? Over it. As I believe in her as brotherly love. And that vision that I had on the on the spires of this mountain, the Oregon Mountains, of her giving birth to a new sun on the solar eclipse, which was a new sun. That's what it's all about. Over twelve, you know, the twelve states and the seven and the and the seven Salem's. I don't know if there's more than seven, but seven Salem's, and uh, the capacity of it, and then the crossover. It's exactly seven years, exactly the day that Trump bombed Syria. The exact day, well, the next day is one day. Uh, 4 8 on 4 8 2024. That was the next crossing, solar eclipse. It completed this whole process. So my abundance should have began then. And it did. Right here. Yeah, and I tell you, I'm not suffering. No, I don't. I'm not laying in fear of where the next meal is coming from or how I'm going to get through that day or what process has to be done. Never is there a night that I'm laying still thinking about the next day, how I'm going to get it done or if it even has a possibility. I know fear about my ceiling over my head or any function of life itself at this point. I don't. No. So the abundance is present. It's time. All of it is abundant to me. How abundant it is. I'm amazed. But to those who had the abundance from the beginning seven years ago, since that incident, or if it was an incident, if it was a ritual, well, this is where it turns over. This is where it changes. It's like that lion's gate. You know, you have those two ADAs. It's like a pair of wheels, the way they're spinning. And within that is the capacity of falling through that diamond. It could be a diamond tooth that grinds us to nothing. Yeah. But it's with one. And then, and I'm not counting the zero. The thief guy. Because that's a good and bad thing. You know, we've talked about that. Both sides. Because he's come to take his bride. And, uh, So the one upon eight makes the spirit of it. And the spirit of it comes upon the time to make itself time. Yeah, that's what it, that's where we are. So it's in time it's it, it's it's the time space uh, capacity of all things. That's what this day could represent. Yeah which allows those things from heaven to take its place on earth and allows those things on earth to take its place in heaven. Truly, in consciousness. And, uh, well, let's not hope for the physical aspect of it because then it would be a beam of light and shrink like a microwave and you would feel terrible for about 1.3 seconds. As then suddenly you feel this wonderful surge of euphoria, uh, based with uh, probably an orgasm, right up through the air, and that's where you you feel the ramen soup slipping through your your mouth when the juice is coming up, and you suck in the ramen soup, effervescence, and that was what she became, effervescence. The rapture will create effervescence. Now, it says that the elect are lifted halfway in the air to meet the Lord in the air. So that patch, a patch of one over the eye, 
presents itself halfway, not the fullness of both eyes, that one was looking at the light and the other one was not. One was taken and one was left behind. Can you see that? Yeah. So for a purpose, you want to be here. For a purpose, you want to live. For a purpose, you want the flesh. For this purpose here. Yeah. And then there's that purpose up there. So. And I think the purpose up there is the child bridges two different types of angels. What we call a jinn or a genie is actually the seraphim. What we call a cherubim is what we consider as angels, like Gabriel and, and that sort of thing. Michael, that appears man. Certainly, not little babies. <laughs> little flying babies with harps. No, none of that. None of that. I don't have anything in that water. I'm not Hmm. I've been talking all the time. I didn't realize I was talking this long. Okay, that's a full hour. So take care. That's the that's today, and it's a number eight. Power and control. It's it's a strapping thing, but it's your control and it's your power. It's your debt. It's what you did to yourself. They're like handcuffs. The eight. It's like a pair of handcuffs. It's yours. Wear them. Yeah, wear them. And uh, yeah, we should we should try to. Um, I don't know. I don't say you put things away because it doesn't matter what you put away. It doesn't matter how you supply it or, you know, prep for it. Those people in North Carolina and Florida, wherever, are proving otherwise that it's just going to take, be taken away from you. So the provisions needs to be provided after the fact, not before. So this is what I'm expecting is the abundance now to start coming into my life. Just like it is slowly showing itself. Because of what took place. For what purpose? Well, that was the path I chose. I said, I, I, I don't want anybody in my life that I cannot trust. So that's what happened. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So... I don't have any loss to be towards them. It's not me that does things to people. No. It's always been that way towards me, but not anymore. No, not anymore. So, you know, take care. Be good to yourself. Fill your life with joy. Laugh. Don't take it so seriously and open up that door of another way of looking at it because you don't want to get caught on a peer review. No, like Israel, Gaza. No. Okay. God bless.